Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, our Let's Play series against Evoken. Uh, it is June 6, 1942 in our replay for today, uh, and I have issued a couple of orders which should be interesting. This looks like it's the first of them. Uh, we've sent a, a sort of three or four destroyers off to bombard different... Uh, bases in New Caledonia and around that region with the hope that we'd kind of identify what the Japanese have there and go from there. And I think I saw a torpedo hit but no explosion. Uh, this is the first of them. The destroyer Benham in an individual task force has encountered an enemy patrol boat and an enemy cargo ship here near New Caledonia. But again, we've sent about four destroyers off to different bases. Their primary orders are actually to bombard with the objective of uncovering some intelligence about what the Japanese might have at these locations to see how strongly they are holding onto the New Caledonia region. Because frankly, New Caledonia is a thorn in our side from a strategic line of communications point of view. And I'd like to know what they have there. So you can see the Benham came in here, engaged in combat with the enemy near Comac. That's just north of sort of New Caledonia, I believe. I don't think it's actually on New Caledonia. I think it's like a little island just north of it. Or maybe it's the northern tip of the island. Either way, um, you can see the Japanese had a cargo ship, the Unyo Maru. Uh, we hit it with five shells and set it ablaze. And then the patrol boat uh, Daitai Maru. Uh, we hit it with seven shell hits uh, and heavy fires. So I don't actually think either one of these will sink from that, which is a little unfortunate. Maybe we'll engage them again. But we at least uh, inconvenienced some Japanese shipping, which is the is more than we can say uh, we've done of late in pretty much any other turns. Benham now sort of moves through those Japanese ships and begins bombarding Comac. And it hits the port, but no indication of any Japanese soldiers there. So that's interesting. Another destroyer that we sent out is the USS Smith. It's bombarding Tana over here to the east of New Caledonia. Likewise, did a little bit of damage to the port, but no sign of any actual Japanese shipping there. And then we, at war, or soldiers, and then we sent a cruiser task force out to Canton Island, uh, which is just southeast of Baker Island. This is, again, sort of a... Ideally, it would be a cleanup operation to prevent the Japanese from throwing any patrol, you know, patrol planes along key shipping lanes for us. Uh, and you can see here, um, it looks like we had one, I believe, Australian cruiser and then a, a series of American heavy cruisers uh, and then also some light cruisers here bombarding the Japanese. Uh, this one, they do have troops on the base. We knew that going in. Looks like about 223 casualties inflicted primarily on non-combatants. I'm guessing there's a fair, there's probably like a base force there or maybe an aviation force there. Destroyed a couple of non combatants and disabled several more. Did a little bit of damage to some infantry, but it didn't seem like there was much there. Uh, a fair bit of runway hits, port hits, airfield or airbase hits. Uh, we had a seagull float planes out providing spotting for them. Um, and it looks like it's the Chichijima Special Base Force, uh, which was shooting back at the Canberra. And I don't see any other it looks like that's the only indication of what the enemy force was that they had there uh five coastal guns firing back so pretty weak force we could probably land troops there without too much risk uh, intel said there were about 2,000 troops but i'm thinking most of those are support personnel based on the fact that it's a special base force and only had a handful of guns and we didn't do a lot of damage to any kind of infantry units there so might be worth dropping a regiment on there just to sort of clear that out Oh, shoot. Apparently, we had two subs near Singapore hit mines. Fuck. All right. I didn't, I didn't catch that the first time I played that, but I just saw the little pop-up there. Bad couple days for our subs. As you remember, we lost a sub off of Meaden um, a turn or two ago. Meanwhile, the Japanese continue to bombard uh, Coast Coast Islands with airplanes out of Palembang. And they're also continuing to bombard our troops in the Philippines with air power. Hopefully those subs aren't too badly damaged, although I don't... I'm not too optimistic about how well a, a sub would hold up to a mine strike. Mines were 
especially at this age, at this part of the war, I think mines were among Japan's best ASW uh, techs. Not because they were particularly well suited to ASW work, but more just because everything else the Japanese did was so bad at this period against subs. So we'll have to see what kind of damage the salmon and the dolphin hat took. I didn't hear any gurgling noises, so at least that's good news. Like, they didn't instantly sink. But we'll see. I'm wondering if that was the task force I sent to the Philippines to drop some supplies. I'm trying to think why there'd be two subs moving through Singapore. I'm guessing that's the sub transports that we sent to bring a little bit of, like, we sent an infinitesimal amount of supplies to the, to the Philippines to try and bolster our position there a little bit. Which is historically accurate. The Americans sent like 20 millimeter anti-aircraft shells on, uh, on subs in a, in a few cases and also, you know, got out important people via that in the Philippines during the campaign. Looks like that's about it for the turn, so I don't think... I had some cruisers which were ordered to bombard Meaden. I guess either they didn't get there or they didn't go at all. We'll have to take a look and see what happened there. And then we've also got to see what happened with those subs. Meanwhile, I'm curious if we got any additional information about the bases we bombarded near New Caledonia. I have no idea when they're going to assault Clark Field either. Our troops there are running on fumes. I think he knows that. He seems to just basically be content to wait... Let those two Japanese divisions wait until they can just overrun us in a single in a single blow. But no idea. I mean, I think he could assault us now and win, but he seems to be very cautious about that. Maybe he's just content using our, our troops as a training material for his bomber pilots because you know they need they need some work to get to get to be better. But you can see here the vast majority of our troops have no supply at all, including some of our armored units. Um, some of the bigger divisions have a little bit of supply, like the 2nd Filipino Army Constabulary Division has a little bit of supply, but that's nowhere near what's required. They haven't yet started to see a huge increase in disruption yet due to no supply. Um, I'm not sure. What about this regiment here? I mean, some of these, guys, these units, usually I think when they start starving, you get big disruption penalties. And then they just die off. I'm trying to think here. This tank battalion. Yeah, I mean, these guys are still pretty much full strength in terms. I guess a tank doesn't starve in theory. Um, but yeah, so uh, the supplies are gone pretty much. But I guess we could. We got a few bullets left if they tried to assault us. We got 300 supplies in Hex. Uh, we got another 400 back here at Batan. What would a full turn of supply be at Clark Field? 6,500. So even if we pulled the 400 forward, still would be well short. But it's kind of interesting that they're hoarding the 400 supplies back here with the base force and, and the Manila group. Like, these guys, what are you doing? You know, 400 supplies, that's enough for, that's a division's worth of supplies, right? Like, if we got 400 supplies up here to, to the constabulary division, that would get them more than halfway to their full complement. They could, they could put up a little bit of a fight with that. Uh, I guess we could reduce the supplies required, like, all the way down and see if, if that causes them to, to move any additional supply forward. Not that I think they're... I don't think 400 supplies is enough to do anything if he was to assault me. But we'll see. Meanwhile, Dolphin... How about you return to Bombay? You got 33 float, 19 engine. That could be survivable if you don't, if you don't run into more more bad guys along the way. Was it just Dolphin who hit the mine? Oh, Salmon here. Salmon isn't even anywhere near as bad. 18 float, 9 system. So Dolphin's the cripple. Dolphin stayed behind. I was right. These are the transports. Um, but Salmon should make it out. Dolphin, That's it's dicey. 33 float for a sub is, is pretty heavy. It even says it's a cripple. It can only move at 9 knots. But I guess we'll see. Um, and then my cruisers who I ordered to bombard Meaden just kind of stayed here. I did tell them to go down here. I don't know why they didn't move. 
Um, do they have... I've set them to absolute threat tolerance, so they should. I don't know if... Could, could it be that the commander of the task force isn't aggressive enough? He's only a 52 aggression. I, I haven't experienced a ton of them just outright refusing orders based on aggression levels. Um, huh. That's strange. There's still no detection of these guys. It's clear sky. I don't think the Japanese even know we're here. Now, maybe it's not a good idea because we have seen Bettys and Nels flying out of Palembang and bombing Coscos. We don't, I don't, I don't have any indication that they're set to naval attack. But we do know they've got some planes there. Granite, Meaden would be a 15 range, you know, 15 range. They, they can, how far can a Nell fly? It's like 20 hexes with a torpedo, I think, right? I'd have to go back and double check at the database. Um... G3NL. So normal radius is 21 hexes with a torpedo. So yeah, I mean, they could they could definitely... I mean, frankly, they could hit from not quite where they are now. But they could get as far north as Sabang. But we are in range of bombarding Meden at night. So like we could get into Meden before before the sun even comes up. Bombard, it's an it's we can move nine hexes in one turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we should be able to make it there, and then as the sun comes up, we'll start retreating north. I don't know. I think it's worth the risk. We don't know that they're set to naval bombardment, but so far no indication that our ships are gonna move. I guess we'll give our our, our skipper there one more turn and see if he's uh willing to willing to do anything. Meanwhile, this Japanese sub here off the coast of Rangoon didn't do anything. We've got our own ships heading into Rangoon. We've got other ships heading back out to Colombo. Supplies up to 86,000 at Rangoon, 15,000 at Mole Mine, 5,000 at Pegu. And we've... Th supplies have, have ticked up a little bit in the interior. I don't know, like, I thought we had well over 100,000 in Burma. I'm hoping that 5,000 at last show is nice. My hope is that we're pulling supplies into China. It's kind of hard to track on an individual turn basis, but the whole idea here is stack as much supply as you can in Burma because one, when he attacks you, you're going to need it. But two, in theory, you can transport more supply over the Burma road than otherwise goes there just sort of automatically. No changes in China as far as I can tell doesn't look like anything's changed there i see no indication that the japanese are launching any kind of offensives in china i don't know if that's an effort to preserve supplies for the japanese but if i was them i would be trying to take nanning and lu cho and quilin because if you take these three bases you can never need to do a long distance tanker convoy what you can basically do is take your tankers at palembang go into singapore Take your tankers at Meaden, go into Singapore. And then the oil can flow from Singapore all the way through Indochina. And then across this road here to Nanning, to Lucho, to Quilin. And then I can move all the way through here into the interior of China because I've already taken Changsha. And then you can either like pull it into Shanghai or if you want, you can go all the way down into Korea. And then from, Fu from Fusan, which I think is Puzan. Uh, you can just do a short jaunt into Japan. So it it lets you transport fuel in a way that, like, there were no supply lines there, and moving them by truck would have been impractical. But it'll, it would allow you to do it in an, in an ahistorical way if you wanted to. I do think you lose a fair bit of spoilage along that route, but it is possible. Um, but at least until he takes these three bases here, he can't do that. So, Yeah. Maybe he's not in a rush. Maybe he's just going to stockpile that stuff. Hey, Wolfpack. Good to see you. Thanks for the resub. 37 months. Holy crap. Three years. Wow. Um, all right. So 
<laughs> yeah. Um, hey, wait, no, thirty-seven. It's a, it's a bad. It's bad. I might be turning thirty-seven later this year. Um, all right, so we did Burma. We've got more supplies continuing to flow in there. That's the other thing. I'm a little like. I don't know what leery of, but I feel like he could shut Rangoon down pretty quickly if he based any naval bombers at Bangkok. He hasn't done that yet, so I'm taking advantage of that and continuing to push more supplies in. But we've got 8,000 supply here in Task Force 112 that'll arrive at Rangoon tomorrow. 4,500 from coming down from Calcutta at 169. Uh, we've got 2,000 coming from Colombo over here. 18,000 coming from, from South Africa is on the way in. Um, and then I think we've got more, another 6,000 coming down from Calcutta. And then we're loading up additional convoys up here at Calcutta. So we are, we are trying to take advantage of that to, to load up with as much supply as possible into, into Burma. But I don't think there's anything else to show you in Burma. Some task forces loading fuel here. We're pumping India full of a lot of fuel and supplies over a million fuel just sitting in at uh, Karachi and then almost a million supply. India is in, in good shape there. The Prince of Wales, as you may recall, the, uh, the brave, brave battleship, the survivor of the Battle of Mersing, uh, is on its way back to England and has been moving at flank speed the last few days. It's gotten its uh, time to arrive down to 14 days, 41 days if we were to move it back to non-flank speed. But I've been moving at flank the last three, four days, and we've seen no increase in the flotation damage. So those temporary repairs are holding, which has which is saving us considerable time. You know, I, one of the things I was worried about when I was originally going to send it back was it was going to take like 76, 77 days just to get back to the United Kingdom. So that was like 77 days we could have been repairing in South Africa. But we moved it to the, to the United Kingdom because the repair yards there are more efficient but it was only going to take like 160 more days at in South Africa to do the repair. So it was sort of like, do you do 70 days of transit and then 90 days of repair? Or do you do 160 and are you better off? Which is the better path? Um, and it kind of was a wash based on the math and my understanding of the shipyards. But if we can move at flank speed, it rapidly becomes a, a big win. And uh, that, that seems to be what it's doing. Fat target for some U-boats. I mean, maybe she's coming up from South Africa. So she's going, she's going that route, but Hey, you know, I'm just going to assume she's got a whole big convoy around her. It doesn't say that, but whatever the, the U-boats are off the American, the American coast, right? Well, actually drum beats over by now, isn't it? It's June. I think drum beat was over by now in any event. Um, anything else going on here? Australia, we've got a big convoy almost unloaded with fuel at Albany. We're up to about 32,000 there. Perth is sitting with 150,000 fuel and 28,000 supply. We've got a couple of convoys and task forces unloading there. We brought in some new aviation stuff into Perth as well. Uh, we've got A24 Banshees, some Kitty Hawks. What did I bring in here, though? Were they the Fulmers? I'm not sure. Maybe they're the Hurricanes. I can't remember what I just brought in here, but we brought we brought in a, some aviation unit there. Uh, 36 more aircraft coming in, VMF 212. So we got some Wildcats on the way in, assuming they don't run into a to an enemy sub. Another 18,000 fuel, 89,000 fuel coming from South Africa. And then 85,000 supply coming from South Africa. So we've got... A few nice chunks of, of fuel convoys and supply convoys coming in there. If we take a look at uh, New Caledonia, we can see the Benham is retreating back to Australia. She used up a good complement of her five-inch shells, both bombarding Comac and also engaging this Japanese shipping here, which appears to be moving east. This is the cargo ship we, we shot up here at, at Comac. There's no indication of any ground troops at Comac based on that bombardment. No indication of any Japanese ground troops at Tana based on the bombardment that was made there. Uh, that was the Smith over here who's also retreating. 
Smith did take some systems damage, maybe from some... I don't even... What would have damaged Smith? We didn't see any... We didn't see anything shoot at it, did we? I don't think so. Combat reports. Uh, I didn't think we saw anything. Just double checking real quick. Bastard in your minds. Um, yeah, it didn't say anything hit Smith, so I'm not sure what would have done the damage. I don't think flank speed would have done anything. Strange. But no indication of any troops there. So we, you know, we could pull a small force into Tana. I'm tempted to maybe take like the 7th Australian Brigade here with its its regular troops and, and drop them at Tana. Tana has a very nice capacity for aviation. You can throw up to a level 5 airfield in here if you've got enough aviation support. No sign of any strong Japanese aviation in the New Hebrides and New Caledonia region. So... You know, if we could get a level five airfield in here, I mean, a fate would be an easy fighter reach. Espritos at seven. I think that's just inside a P-40's range. Maybe not a B. What about an E? I don't think the B has options for fuel tanks. Eh, it would be just outside. So if we put P-40's on Tana... We could dominate a fate potentially, or you know, we could get in an air war where we could we could win air superior air superiority over a fate. We wouldn't really be able to reach out to Nomaya or Esprito with fighter cover. But our bombers could still hit out that way. You know, we got B seventeens and things that could do that. Tana would also give me the ability to to maybe expand bases, you know, to this dot base, put an airfield here push that out that would get us in range at, at espritus also if we were able to dominate a fate then we could drop troops at a fate and then from there which is already a level four airfield we could drop you know we could cover espritus and then we could sort of use tana as the bridge head into retaking the new hebrides chain and then we could hop over to comac take comac and maybe Bilip island if there's a strong japanese force at nomaya we could leave that and not even bother with it um, and just isolate it because my main concern here is the strategic line of communications like we're not at the point where we really want to i don't think drive in on the japanese fully but i do think we need to secure our supply line between the u.s west coast and australia we have to divert way too far south having lost new caledonia and so tana feels like a nice kind of in reach it's at least it's in shuttle reach of suva so we can shuttle planes into tana so if we could get like a base force at tana with some with some defensive force it could kind of be like our guadalcanal almost the big difference is that japanese fleet carriers are still around i don't know that he wants to operate them that far south that would use up a lot of fuel but still it's worth considering um, I think we have another bombardment task force coming in. So the Cummings is going to head to a fate to see what's there. It'd be funny if it runs into these guys. <laughs> if we if we if we shoot up the those those ships that are retreating, and then we also have Preston. Let's send Preston to Nomaya. I didn't bombard Nomaya. I don't know that there's anything there. We haven't flying recon flights. Which makes me feel like he's really soft in this region. Maybe he's decided it's not worth defending this far south. It's too exposed. But if that's the case, I want to move in and take it quickly. Because even just a few float planes gives him way too much intel. So we're going to bombard Nomaya and Efate next turn. And then we'll see what the Japanese have down here. If it really is this light, we've got we've got forces that can that can take take these places back. I haven't done it mainly because I don't have I don't have the logistics in place for a protracted campaign. 
but taking taking weekly occupied islands that I can do. Um, meanwhile, we also have uh, some. Looks like they got a unit at Funafuti. Remember, we took uh, Vaidapu with a small force, the Kanga base force, in the Ellis Islands, trying to push north of the Fiji the Fiji chain. And then we also did bombard Canton Island last turn. Looks like it's just one base force unit here. I'd like to take that as well, again, from a strategic line of communications point of view. I'm fully on board with, you know, island hopping and not taking every single base. However, when it comes to our supply line to Australia, it's just too easy to put float planes in there and get them, get them info that I, I can't afford to have his subs knowing where all of our convoys are. So Canton... Not necessarily Funafuti, but Canton and then the New Hebrides and New Caledonia chains seem like likely targets. But we'll see what the information that we uh, glean from from the next set of bombardments gives us. We're still unloading our uh, our base force here and our coastal artillery at Baker. I sent some reinforcements there from uh, the Pearl Harbor region. Honestly, I don't know if he's even detected these guys yet. They've been here for like two turns. Still says no detection here. It's taken the troops a good long while to unload. The docks are too small to do it. So we set them to amphibious, which means they're going to unload over the beach. That's a slow process, but they are doing it. The 138th Base Force has gotten its infantry ashore, it looks like. It's also gotten some some of its anti-aircraft or, I guess, LMG sections, some of its support Hasn't got any aviation support on, but once they do get there, we'll have 16 aviation support. We've already got the 1st Marine Defense Battalion here with some coastal guns. And then we also got some of the 93rd Coastal anti-aircraft, which is mostly just 50 cals at the moment. The heavier stuff is harder to do without a dockyard and cranes, but with amphibious in theory, you can still do it. Nonetheless, we do have four, or we have six aviation support with a tender in the harbor there too but it's it's some progress is being made um i don't know that there's anything else interesting going on right now let's see here we've got i did move my i did move a carrier out didn't i yeah so we've got hornet also heading you know let's let's slow down a little bit hornet We've got Hornet heading out to the Line Islands. I was a little bit uncertain if he was going to make a play at trying to take out these this shipping here. Um, you know, I haven't done much with my carriers. An individual carrier, not a great idea if, he, if the Kudabutai comes around. I don't think a handful of, of troop transports will draw in the Kudabutai, but perhaps, you know, a, a raiding force of cruisers or destroyers might try to get you know these guys are unescorted so might try and win a win a pretty meaningful victory i mean these guys 16 8 12 and 8 those are pretty decent victory values there for him to just be able to freely take so i did send the uh, carrier group out i also sent some uh uh to sort of provide some cover here and and this group's just going to kind of sit here we know there's nothing that he's got that's strong enough to threaten us at canton Tarawa and Majuro are too far away. And we'll just see. You know, if he if he if he sails north, maybe there will be an opportunity that presents itself. And if nothing does happen, then we'll just sail south with the uh, Hornet, maybe drop a few air raids on Canton to kind of keep those Japanese troops off balance and then withdraw back to Pearl. I think is sort of the general the general plan. Um Tanker, blah blah blah. I thought I sent a replenishment task force out that way. It's not those guys. Maybe not. I don't know that we need them. Might have forgotten to do that. Uh, Slick William, thank you very much for the... Or Wilhelm, thank you very much for the resub. I do have a cold. Sorry if it's too apparent, but yeah, I've been, I've been under the weather last week. It's been rough. Um, I don't know that there's anything else to show. The 
carriers in South Africa still doing their refit. They'll be out for another 24 goddamn days. Did I turn off their refit? I don't want them to do it. So they won't have another refit till October. But let's just not do that again by mistake. Um... We got some pilots and other things training, but I don't know that that's interesting to look at. So I think we'll take a look at information. Ship sunk last turn, nothing confirmed or even suspected. Aviation loss is incredibly light. One operational loss for the Japanese. Group withdrawal for our air units. We've got some B-17s that are doing training in the Mojave Desert right now that have to withdraw in about two weeks, but we'll leave them to do their thing for a few more days. There's no benefit to withdrawing them at this point. I don't get any political points or anything like that to do it now. Ship withdrawals. Are, is there anything that's overdue? No, six more days for a couple of destroyers already at Colombo. Can I tell them to withdraw? Oh, these ships won't return. Lame. I don't really understand what bases ships have to be at to withdraw. Oh, I can do that now. Okay, might as well withdraw now so I don't forget. Oh, so that one will return. The other one won't. All right, so we withdrew those two destroyers. No reason to keep them around for six more days. I don't have any use for them in the short term. I don't get any political points, though, because they, you know, they, they were too close to being withdrawn to give me any political points for that. Next thing is a transport in Aden, 14 days. And then some of those cruisers start getting withdrawn in about 15 days. So that sucks. Maybe we should get them sunk before. Cruisers are, feel useful. Uh, I withdrew the Wakefield just so I didn't forget. Because I had been actually forgetting a couple of units uh, withdrawing previously, some air units. And it was costing me political points, but... Ground unit withdrawals. Anybody overdue? 24 days. Some engineers. Really? We got to withdraw the Johnson Island engineering force. Why do we have to withdraw a bunch of... What are these guys? Anyway, these are, these are engineers and aviation support. Why would I have to withdraw them? Like, aren't they kind of important to operating those bases and they're dedicated to those bases huh yeah where else are they needed i i don't know i hope they just withdraw on their own though because i really don't want to have to like transport them out of there back to a rear echelon base that would be strange i think all those bases are well enough provisioned but i will need to put like a new base force in there to do anything with which is annoying but hey pointless logistics it is sometimes you know it is a, it is a gary grigsby game so maybe, maybe that should be the name of our save But we'll send this one back to Evoken pretty quick and hopefully get a, a, a turn back soon. Uh, what I will say is we are going to switch to bombing the Reich now at this point. So I don't have anything else to go over this turn. I think, you know, we had some interesting attacks in and around New Caledonia. I think that was um, good intelligence to have. And then also the unfortunate sub striking those mines. Probably a more active turn than we've seen in a while no no midway for june 6th but 
we can still call it midway day. That was that was mid, June six was midway, right? Um, but uh, in any event, that's gonna do it for episode number one seventy one of our look at War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. As always, please leave your thoughts down below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.